Good morning and welcome to the online service for Hillsford Baptist Church. Uh, we are so grateful that you have made the choice to tune in today and to be a part of our service. We're also thankful for those who have been remaining faithful through the past few months um, that we have not been able to meet uh, like we normally do. And so um, we just thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. We have a great service planned, and we're just excited about that. Know that we've been praying for you, uh, and, and you have been on our hearts and minds, and, and we just pray that God is protecting you, keeping you, keeping you safe. Um, we also covet your prayers as well, and so if you could just uh, be in prayer for our staff, be in prayer for our church body, as we've had a, a few families affected by the uh, COVID uh, uh, virus that's been going around, and so we just want to continue to lift those up. Um, from what we know, everyone is doing well and as, as, as and, and as recovering uh, well, and so uh, they just they, you just have to go through that process, and so. Um, but uh, we do need to continue in prayer for those we also for those people, and also we need to pray for our pastor, um, Pastor Craig, uh, who is uh, with his family uh, quarantining because uh, he has tested positive as well, and so he is on the last end of that, um, the last leg of that, and so uh, hopefully you will hear from him next week and uh, and get back to, uh, to to the pulpit, and so I know he's longing for that. Um, but be in prayer for his family as well. You know, we live in a crazy time, and it's so easy to get caught up in our own anxieties and, 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 and everything that's happening in the world and forget the promises that God has given us in his word. And so I think I, I just wanted to read this scripture because uh, I, I think it's best to just to remember those and to, to just uh, to fall back on those in times where uh, we may be feeling anxious, we may be feeling kind of, uh, you know, worried. Uh, like we talked about last week, but in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, a very common vo- verse that, that we, uh, we know, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Um, what a great promise from the Word of God. Uh, we don't have to be anxious, we don't have to worry, but all we have to do is trust in God. So I just want to encourage you this week uh, to trust God, to, to lean on Him in this kind of a weird time that, that our world is in, and it's so easy to become anxious. Uh, in regards to announcements today, we've got a few announcements, uh, not too many, um, but Prayerfully, we do plan on meeting and getting our services back to regular services on November 8th. Uh, we'll be evaluating uh, the situation uh, over the next few days, and, uh, and, and, but the plan is to, uh, to meet November 8th um, and get back to our regular scheduled services. Um, also, shoe boxes are available for your pickup. So if you um, did not pick up your Christmas shoe box for Samaritan's Purse, we have several still here at the church. And so if you want to swing by, uh, you can call first and we can have someone bring it out to you. Um, or you can just come on in and, and pick up your shoe box uh, so you can be getting, getting that ready. Um, and so I uh, just want to make you aware of that. Um, but also be aware that uh, the envelope that in there has that's in the box gives you all the instructions um they're they're requesting that we mail the nine dollar donation in this this year and they're they're requesting no cash uh check only or you can go online and pay and give your donation online um as well and so uh there uh there's some new new things going on there there but what a great ministry that is um as as the gospel is going out all over the world uh, through the simple gift of a shoebox with a with a few cool toys in it, uh, something to make a kid smile, but also the gospel is going out and, and provides opportunities to share the gospel um, with that, with that simple gift. So, I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Also, just want to encourage you. Um, some of you may be uh, wondering what do we do about tithing. Um, there are a few options. You can go on our website, healthsport dot com, and there's an online giving. Uh, uh, option there, um, as well as the Hillsford app. You can go in there and give online. Um, you can mail it in, or uh, you can bring it by the church. Uh, the staff will be here, and, and, and all that good stuff. So we, we just uh, really appreciate your, th- your faithfulness there. Uh, we could not do 
what we do here uh, through the ministries of this church without uh, the faithfulness of uh, the members. And so, again, thank you so much for all that you do and for your faithfulness. Guys, we have a great service here planned today. Um, I hope that you're blessed. Um, Again, we're praying for you. Give us a call if you need anything. Um, And if we can pray with you, give us a call. We'd love to do that. Um, Enjoy the rest of our service. God bless. Today we're going to sing a song called Great Things. And so I want to encourage you to sing along with your families as we just lift up our Lord today. Good morning, Hillsford Baptist Church. I'm so excited and so blessed that I get to bring the Word of God to you today. Um, I really miss uh, being in service. Uh, to be honest, the recording thing is very difficult because I love talking to people and it's very difficult to talk to a camera. So if you could just be in extra prayer for me today, just to, um, um, just give me that double doses of the Holy Spirit Today, I'll definitely appreciate that. But before we get started, um, let us just go uh, to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we just remember to lift, lift up the people in our church right now. They're just affected by COVID and everything like that. And just pray for God's uh, um, a great miracle healing uh, for them. Um, so let us pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, God, we just uh, come to you today, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just pray that your word will be said here today, God, that, uh, that not, not my word will be spoken, but your word will be, Lord. Lord, I just lift up um, the, uh, uh, Craig Polson and his family as they're affected by COVID and just many members of our church right now that are affected by it too. God, I just uh, pray um, that you just have a divine intervention, Lord, and just bring in a great healing upon our people, Lord, so we can meet together as a family of God. But until then, Lord, I just pray that your word will be said. Lord, just be with us here today as we just dive into your scriptures, Lord, as we talk about the cleansing today, God, that's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. God, speak through me today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Like I said, just so excited to be bringing the word of God to you today. Um, You know, a lot of times in life, especially looking back, we as people have done some strange and weird things. And sometimes we can't even explain why we did those things. I know last night, for some reason, I let my wife talk me in and doing a, a charcoal mask, you know, when they put the makeup, the Mary Kay stuff all over your face. You know, she said it was supposed to cleanse your skin. I let her do it. You know, I don't know why I let her do it, but I let her do it. And, you know, sometimes we do... <laughs> Crazy things for our, our, our lovely brides, but um, looking back upon our life, you could probably think of something weird and strange that you've done, and you're probably thinking right now, I really have no idea why I did that. And when you dive into Scripture, especially the Old Testament, you can see a lot of people did a lot of weird and strange things, especially prophets. You know, prophets sometimes did a lot of weird stuff. You know, if you look at Isaiah, for years, Isaiah embarrassed people by walking around dressed like a prisoner of war. For months, Jeremiah carried a yoke on his shoulder. Ezekiel acted like a little boy and played war. You know, why did these men do these strange and peculiar things? You know, these peculiar things were acts of Mercy. You see, the people of God, the nation of Israel, became deaf to God's 
voice. And they were no longer paying attention to His covenant. See, the Lord called these men to do strange things and hope that people would wake up and listen to what they had to say. But out of all the prophets that had something to say, no prophet preached a more painful sermon than Hosea. See, Hosea, you know, he wasn't called to dress like a prisoner of war. Hosea wasn't called to carry a yoke upon his shoulder. Hosea wasn't called to pretend to be a little boy and play war. No, Hosea had a more painful sermon to tell. You see, Hosea was instructed to marry a prostitute named Gomer. You know, could you imagine that? You know, you're excited about being used for God, and then God calls you to marry a prostitute. And you see, prostitutes were seen as unclean. They were considered very low people. They were, you know, uh, the Israelites, you know, the Israel nation looked down upon them. And for Hosea to marry a prostitute would bring great shame upon himself. It probably brought great shame upon uh, upon his family, people were wondering why. You know, it probably got people's attention really, really quick. You know, why did Hosea marry a prostitute? See, Gomer ended up bearing him three children, and Hosea wasn't even for sure if the last two kids were even his. And then sadly, Gomer left Hosea for another man. And Hosea had the humiliating responsibility of buying back his own wife. And you know, we look at this story and we wonder, you know, what is all of this about? And when you're reading the story of Hosea, you have to understand that there are two stories going on. You have Hosea and Gomer's relationship, and you have God and Israel's relationship paralleling at the same time. And Gomer's and Hosea's relationship, it was a vivid picture of what the people of Israel had done to God. See, Israel had prostituted themselves to idols and had committed spiritual adultery. You see, Israel... You know, they begin to intermarrying with other countries. They begin to worship other gods, false idols. You know, they began to give into their sexual lust. You had priests doing ungodly things. You had a nation that had turned its back on God and consumed themselves with worldly pleasure. You know, Thomas Jefferson once stated, Indeed, I tremble when I reflect that God is just. You know, Thomas Jefferson, he stated those words as he surveyed the United States. Indeed, I tremble when I reflect that God is just. And the prophet Hosea did the same thing as he surveyed the kingdom of Israel. From his bitter experience with his wife, Hosea knew that sin not only breaks the heart of God, but also offends the holiness of God. In Psalms 89.14, it says this, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Guys, when we as children of God, the redeemed, the ones that have been justified, the ones that have been saved by grace, when we begin to fill ourselves with worldly pleasure, you know, we, uh, when we become unrighteous, when we become unjust, we mock the throne of God. God wanted to forgive the sins of His people. He wanted to restore their fellowship with him. But you see, the people were not ready. They not only would not repent, but they would also want to admit that they had sinned. So God conducted a trial and brought them to the bar of justice. It is a basic spiritual principle that until people experience the guilt of their conviction, they can't enjoy the glory 
of conversion. Let me say that one more time for you. Until people experience the guilt of their conviction, they cannot enjoy the glory of their conversion. So here we go, guys. If you have your Bibles today, we will be in Hosea chapter 6, reading uh, the entire chapter, which is only 11 verses, so don't, don't freak out. But we're going to be starting off with verses 1 through 3 right here at the beginning. So it says here, it says, Come and let us return to the Lord, for He has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And on the third, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like rain, like the latter and former rain of the earth. You see, they had, they had turned their back upon God they have filled themselves with the world you know and guess what because of that God had allowed famine God had allowed war God had allowed destruction he allowed disease attack his nation in order to bring them back to him you know when you read these words right here when you read these words of the of the of these first three verses of Israel when you read these words you get the impression that the nation is sincerely repenting and that they are seeking the Lord. But you see, the problem with Israel was, the problem with this nation, they were concerned was for only for healing and not the cleansing. They wanted God to make things right. Guys, how many times do we want God to make things right in our life? How many times do we bring on things upon ourselves when we give in to our sinful desires, when we go off the wrong path? How many times do we ask God to make things right? How many times do we ask God, just bring normal back to our lives? God, just make things right. You see what the problem with the nation of Israel and with us sometimes is that they and we, we did, they didn't come with broken hearts and surrender wills. See, they wanted happiness, not holiness. They wanted a change of circumstance and not a change of character. What are you desiring right now? Are you seeking happiness and a change of circumstance? Or are you seeking holiness and a change of character? You know, one of my favorite things to do in the summertime is to go to the beach with my family. I love going to the beach. I love fishing. I love swimming. I just love being able to relax and just enjoy the beach and the ocean. You know, but there's always one day where it's kind of rainy and a storm comes in and the ocean gets really, really rough. And when the ocean gets really, really rough along the beach, they'll put signs that say, beware of rip current, beware of strong current, uh, beware of undertow, please do not swim because of current. And sometimes even driving on the road, they'll have those light up billboard sign that says, beware of rip current. You see the rip current, when the weather gets rough, that current becomes very, very strong. And when you get into the ocean and you, when you get stuck in that current, that current is a lot stronger than you are. No matter how great of a swimmer you are, that current will suck you right out and can take you miles out into the ocean. You know, many times people will ignore the signs of the current. They will ignore it and just say, look, I, 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 I'm fine, I'm a great swimmer, and they'll jump in, and the next thing you know, that current begins to suck them out and they begin to try to fight it. And next thing you know, they're 100 yards and 500 yards. Next thing you know, they are about a mile away from shore. And next thing you know, they have to send a boat or a helicopter out there to rescue them in order to bring them back to shore. Guys, many times we ignore the signs. We ignore the danger that we are putting ourselves in and we find ourselves swept away and needing of rescue. You know, people want to be rescued from the danger that they put themselves in, but they do want they do not want to be delivered from 
their sins. People want rescue, but they do not want that deliverance. You know, Israel wanted that rescue. They wanted that healing. But they didn't want the deliverance. They didn't want the cleansing. They didn't want to confess what they had done. You know, people shed tears of remorse over their suffering, but not tears of repentance. And the people of Israel thought this would work. They thought if they just came to God and just said, God, make things right. Here's a sacrifice. They literally thought God would make everything right. In verse 2 it says, After two days He will revive us, and on the third day He will raise us up that we may live in His sight. Guys, they were so blind. They did not know how, how far they had gone. When um, I was a lot younger, I was at my aunt and uncle's house one night, and uh, me and my cousins, we were playing hide and seek. And on the, perimeter, on the per- perimeter of their property, there used to be bob wire. And I remember it was late at night, and I wanted to hide on the other side of the bob wire. And I remember when I was running, I jumped over the fence, but my right leg didn't quite make it. And there was some loose bob wire, and it wrapped around my leg. So right before I landed, the bob wire got really tight and jerked, and it gashed my leg wide open. I remember I went inside, there was blood pouring, uh, pouring out. I don't do good with blood. You know, I pass out. I just, I just don't like, I do not like blood whatsoever. But I remember I was bleeding, the cut was deep, and all I wanted, I'm like, just put a Band-Aid on it, I'll be fine. And they're like, no, you know, you have rust, you have dirt and ground from the barbed wire inside your cut. And the first thing they did was take a thing of alcohol and pour it on my leg. And when that hit that cut, man, it burned. It, it hurt so bad but that alcohol was killing the bacteria. It was killing the dirt. And after they got it cleaned up, then they put a bandage on it to let it heal. You see, in order for a wound to be heal, uh, to heal, it has to be cleaned first. You see, the Israelites, they were like a physician. They were putting suntan lotion on a third degree burn. Instead of calling for a drastic surgery, they wanted a quick fix. They were, they were, and they were expecting a quick fix. Guys, a quick fix is one that marks of a unrepentive heart that doesn't want to pay the price for a deep cleansing. They saw forgiveness and restoration as a mechanical thing that was guaranteed and not a relationship relational matter of getting right with God. In verse 3 it says this, Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like rain, like the ladder of all former rain upon the earth. When I was in high school, I remembered I always parked um, in the parking lot near the vending machine so I could grab a quick drink in the morning or, or a snack. You know, I put the money in there, push a button, out came my drink or snack. And guys, many times we treat God like a vending machine. We put something in, push a button, and expect something out. You see, our relationship with God is not a mechanical relationship. The Christian life is a deep, meaningful relationship with God. And it's a relationship that is not based on cut and dried formulas. You know, many of you right now that are watching this um, are married. Um, you know, I myself am married. I love my wife. And, you know, we've been married for two years. I know that's not a lot to some of y'all, but, you know, we're just getting started. But, you know, I love my wife and she loves me. And sometimes, you know, marriage is not always a fun, grand experience. You know, sometimes problems come up. And many of you out there today that are watching this video have seen some just destructive days in your marriage, that y'all have been through some things that felt like it has shattered everything. And you might, be, you might have experienced or even experiencing something like Hosea and Gomer, that someone in the, uh, in, in the marriage, whether it's a husband or a wife, was unfaithful or, or has done something drastic that has caused damage to your marriage. And you know, can you imagine this? Imagine that happening 
and your husband or wife just coming up to you saying, hey, you know, let's just, let's just move on. You know, here's a, here's a gift, you know. Uh, let's just move on. Let's pretend things are back the way they were. Let's just move on from this. You know, it wouldn't work. And why is that? Because the hurt is deep. And no gift, no, 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 no lofty words are going to fix it. Only a true repentive heart, someone of brokenness can fix that. And see, Israel was the same way. They were dependent on lofty words. They wanted to forget everything that happened. They just wanted to move forward. Guys, when we truly repent, our words will come from broken hearts. Hearts, and it will cost you something. It will cost you your pride. It will cost you a lot. You know, words can either reveal or they can conceal, depending on the uh, depending on the honesty and the humility of the sinner. And here we go. Let's look at the last part of Hosea. So the first three verses were the uh, with the voice of the Israel nation. Now. We're reading what Hosea has to say to them the, 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 of what God is saying through Hosea. And here we go, pick it up in verses 4 through 11. It says, O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew, it goes away. Therefore, I have hewn them from the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But like men, they transgress the covenant. They, um, there they have dealt treacherously with me. Gilead is a city of Ill, evildoers and defiled with blood. As a band of robbers lie in wait for a man, so the company of priests murder on the way to Shechem. Surely they commit lewdness. I have seen horrible things in the house of Israel. There is harlotry of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, a harvest is appointed to you when I return the captives of my POC. Hosea, right here, right here, Hosea revealed the true character of Israel. Their love for the, uh, for the Lord was like, the, like a morning cloud and the dew on the ground. Have you ever gone out in the morning and see dew on the ground? It's shiny. It's actually very pretty to look at it. It looks like little crystals along the grass. But right when the sun hits it, it evaporates. It is gone. And what Hosea is saying, Israel's devotion to the Lord was only temporary. It was lovely, but not lasting. God doesn't want our relationship with him to be shallow. He doesn't want it to be based on feelings and empty words and rituals. He doesn't want hearts that are enthusiastic one day and frigid the next. In verses 6 through 7 it said, For I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But like men they transgress the covenant. There they dealt treacherously with me. Some translations in your Bible where it says uh, where it says men, it actually will say Adam. You see, God promised Adam his blessing if he obeyed his command. All he had to do was stay away from the tr uh, tree of good, the knowledge of good and evil. And if you look at this story, you know, many times when we read about the fall, you know, many times we put the blame on the woman that it was her fault. But I want to read you a passage of Scripture right here. It says, 1 Timothy 2.14, it says, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. You see, when Eve bit into that fruit, when she bit into it, she was deceived. She fell for the temptation that Satan put in front of her. But Adam, but Adam, Adam, when he bit into that fruit, he knew exactly what he was doing. Many times we look at this story as like two little children that just kind of accidentally touched the, to the stove and burnt themselves. No, Eve, you know, she was to see, but Adam knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He saw his bride died spiritually and he knew the same was going to happen to him. Adam willingly and deliberately
plunge the human race into sin. You see, Israel's passion for sin was like a fire, out of control, destructive, and they just wanted a healing. They didn't want a cleansing. Yes, Adam deliberately plunged the human race into sin. But Jesus deliberately pulled the human race out of sin. You see, Jesus did not just heal us from sin, but cleansed us from sin. And how do we receive this cleansing? How do we become healed? It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Adam sinned, death was, death was passed down through the blood. His blood had become toxic. It became poison. And that same blood that ran through Adam runs through us. Our blood is toxic, is poison, and corrupted with Sin And the only way we can be cleansed, the only way that we can be healed is through the inc incorruptible blood of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 18-19, it says this, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, of the Lamb without blemish and without spot. You were bought with a price. You weren't bought with money. You weren't bought with silver and gold. You weren't bought with things that would soon fade away, that would soon that will become corrupted. No, you were bought with the uncorruptible blood of Jesus Christ. It is perfect and, when, and it was poured out for you and me through the cleansing blood of Christ, we can be healed. The only way we can be healed, guys, is through the blood of Christ. There is no other way. I want you to picture this right now with me. Just picture this. Going back to Hosea and Gomer, just picture this. You know, Hosea had the task of buying his wife back. You know, she got caught up into slavery. She was, she, was auctioned. she was at an auction to be auctioned off. And could you imagine, I want you to imagine just a crowd full of people buying women, buying, buying this, this horrible sex trafficking thing that was going on. Imagine this. You know, Jose is there in the middle of the crowd. And they bring his wife to center stage and she's humiliated. She's probably completely undressed. Everything is exposed. And the crowd becomes dead silent. Dead silent. You know, she's being offered up as cheap. You know, the price is not high. You know, they're, they're not selling her for that much. But, and the crowd is quiet. But out of the crowd, you hear Hosea cry out, That is my wife. What is the price? I'll buy her back. Name it. That is my wife. Wife, she is mine. That is exactly what Christ did for you and me. You see, Adam willingly died with his bride. Christ came and willingly died for his bride too. You were just like Gomer upon the auction, fully exposed. Your sins before everyone. And Christ is out in the crowd saying, that is my son. That is my daughter. I will pay the price. I will pay it myself. I will pay it with my blood. I will cleanse them. I will wash away everything. That is my child. They are mine. That is what Christ did for you. He didn't just heal you. He cleansed you as well. And where are you at right now in your life? Where are you at with your walk with God? Have you turned his back on him? Are you going through a season of just, you know, of rebellion? Have you just done things in your path that you're just not proud about? Guys, you can be cleansed from that. Take it before God. God wants to restore that fellowship. God wants you to come to Him. 
Go to Him. Receive that cleansing. Receive that healing. Maybe you're watching, watching this today and you've never experienced the cleansing power of Jesus Christ. There is no sin out there that Jesus cannot cleanse. You're never too go- far gone for Him. You know, many people want healing. Many people know that they're needing a Savior, but they don't know that it's only through the cleansing of Jesus Christ that you can be saved. It's only through Him. He bought you with a price. Accept it. Accept that payment that He has laid down. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior and be made white as snow. You know, I love that hymn, What Can Wash Away My Sin? What can make me whole again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Guys, it's all about the blood of Christ. It's all about what He poured out for you and me. It's the only thing that can cleanse us. You know, I pray that you have received that cleansing and that have been healed, but if you haven't, guys, I pray today that you call upon the name of Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I pray that you accept that payment that he, that he laid down for you, that you are bought with a price. Know that you are valuable in the eyes of God, that He gave up everything. He gave up His only begotten Son in order to have you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank You for Your Word today. God, thank You for everything that You have said to us today. God, we know that we are in need of healing, but it's only through the cleansing of Jesus Christ that we can be saved. God, I just pray for the people that are watching this today. God, I pray that you're working in their hearts right now. Lord, I pray for repentance. I pray for cleansing in their life. God, heal our church. Heal our nation right now, Lord. And let us turn not our backs away from you, but turn our backs towards you in this time that we are in. God, thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you have a great Sunday, and God bless.